sometimes we want to use some filler light in our scenes too. That's where the point light comes in. So a point light is going to just serve as a omnidirectional source of light. If you have materials that use specular highlights, those highlights are going to be picked up in the material. But we can use this type of light as just a filler. So we can affect the general intensity of the light. And by using a shadow type of no shadows, this light is going to pass through a lot of our geometry. Just like our other sources, we can adjust the intensity and the shadow type. So we could also have this light cast shadows. But for now, we're just going to use this as this kind of general fill light that's going to be behind this architectural core. Okay. We'll drop the intensity down just a little bit. Right. So the last type of light we're going to take a look at is the area light. And this is just a rectilinear light that is useful for illuminating portions of our scene. However, it's only useful when you are baking light into your scene. So baking is the process of actually calculating the light bounces and combining it with the materials of your scene. This just goes to say that it won't affect the lighting of your scene in real time. These types of lights are helpful if you have a scene in which you don't have light conditions changing, but you want to provide some nice planar light and you want to bake it into the scene. Okay, so that's the workflow for setting up some lights in Unity. And I recommend, just like we did with our colliders, we're going to create an empty game object and I'm going to rename this to be lights. And I'm going to drop all of my lights under this group. So this way I have, and I can go ahead and just get rid of the Farnsworth cube and the sphere. And I can stay organized by grouping elements in my scene under parents.